First Kings chapter 4, verse 1 says, So King Solomon was king over all Israel. And then, uh, I want you to go to verse 29. And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much. Look at the word exceeding much. And largeness of heart. I'd like you to look at the word largeness of heart. He was a giver. All right? Even as the sun that is on the seashore. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of the children, of all the children of the east country. And all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all men. That even the Ezrahite and Heman and Chalcoi and Darda, the sons of Mahol. And his fame was in all nations round about. And he spake 3,000 proverbs. And his songs were a thousand and five. Although they were not all written in the book of Proverbs and Song of Solomon and Ecclesiastes. And he spake of trees from the cedar tree that is in Lebanon even unto unto the hyssop that springeth out of the wall. Hyssop is a plant used for medicinal and religious purposes. He spake also of beasts, and of fowl, and of creeping things, and of fishes. Okay? Palagay ko doon, nanggaling ang awitin. Let me tell you about the beasts, and doon nanggaling yun eh. Okay? Diba? Verse 34. And there came all of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon... From all kings of the earth which had heard of his wisdom. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for your word tonight. May you bless this, dear Father, for our spiritual strength and learning. And I pray, Lord, that we are not asking for Solomon's wisdom, but we are asking, dear God, for spiritual wisdom that we might be able to understand your word and proclaim your word to others. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Where's the other lesson? Where's the previous lesson? Can I have the outline of the the previous lesson? Uh, Anyone that has that? The outline of, of the previous letter? Can I have it? Let me just review that. Okay? Ito yung outline ng first lesson natin on Solomon, on the life of Solomon. As I've said, we cannot overestimate the influence Solomon had on this world. Makikita nyo in verse number 34. And there came of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon from all kings of the earth which had heard of his wisdom. Now we find in our lesson tonight, God's answer to Solomon's request and the evidence of his wisdom. Now we talked about this already. Number one, God grants Solomon's request. In 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 10 to 15, I have read that to you already last week. Doon na pag natin how that Solomon did not ask for anything but understanding. Understanding. And the Lord was delighted over what Solomon asked. In 1 Kings chapter 3, verses uh, 10. And God said unto him, because thou was asked this thing, had and hast not asked for thyself long life, 
Neither hast asked riches for thyself, nor hast asked the life of thine enemies, but hast, hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. And in verse number 10, it says, And the speech pleased the Lord. And the speech pleased the Lord. You see, the life of a believer must always be pleasing to God. And the only way for us to be pleasing to God is to be obedient to Him. Amen? Okay. God noted what Solomon did not ask. He did not ask for long life, riches, even for the life of his enemies, but he asked for a wise and understanding heart, and God gave these things to him. Asking is praying. Amen? Asking is praying. Daily, as I would pray to the Lord, oftentimes I would ask him, Lord, please give me the wisdom to make the right decisions today. Asking is praying. When we pray within the will of God, we can be sure that God will answer our prayers positively. God will answer our prayers positively. Although we say that sometimes God answers our prayer three ways. He might say yes. He at times say no. Or sometimes he would say wait. Wait. Because according to Isaiah, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Amen? All right. Wait. Wait is another character of faith. Do you realize that? Wait is another character of faith. So we can be sure that God will answer our prayers positively. Let me read to you what I posted on my Facebook today. My prayer for America and the millions of Americans who love the Lord and obey His Word. I have even asked our Bible mode pastors and leaders and those that know the Lord to pray for America tonight. Several hours from now, election will close. We'll be able to know in 24 hours who won. And I'd like you to listen to my prayer for America. Lord, you said in your word, the powers that be are ordained of God. Election right now is happening in the USA. And 14, year, 14 hours later, polls will close. America is in the crossroad. Yes, America today has become a very liberal country, importing this liberalism all over the world. They gave the world the evil of modernism, humanism, and secularism, which your word has declared in prophecy Lovers of their own selves and lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. They have become today the policemen of the world, dictating their kind of democracy and their brand of freedom by invading evil nations in the pretext of protecting freedom. This resulted to a lot of hatred towards them. But Lord, more than 200 years ago, America was a bastion of evangelical faith. The, base, the Bible was the basis of the Constitution. The Bill of Rights were penned by leaders who feared the God of the Bible. Because of this, 
They sent thousands of missionaries around the world preaching Christ and Him crucified. They published and distributed millions of Bibles in many countries and millions of people have been converted to Christ, which included my family. And because of this, I am an evangelist today and a public servant whose advocacy is the Word of God. Yes, dear God, it cannot be denied that they also contributed to the bigotry and tyranny around the world. They caused the massacre of many Filipinos when they invaded our country and bought our nation from a corrupt religious Spain. Dear God, I am pleading in behalf of the so many millions of Americans who, are, who still love you and serving you. Those thousands of ecclesias who are still preaching your word, believing in biblical values and still sending missionaries around the world and still respect the Bill of Rights, they want Trump and Pence to win. Lord, I pray that you will answer their prayers. Knowing, their God, that whoever wins is what you have ordained and what the Americans deserve. My prayer is, thy will be done. And whatever happens in this election, that your children, your churches, will be challenged to preach and stand and live for the truth of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. That was my prayer before I came here. In the privacy of my room. And then I said in my hashtag, come back to God, America, and be blessed once more. Folks, you know, I love my country so much. I don't love America, but I love the American believers. Our ecclesia came from America. Your pastor was converted under an American missionary. My family was converted under an American missionary. We have with us an American missionary tonight. And if ever I'm praying this, I am not praying this for, for, the tot for, for America. I'm praying this for the millions of people there who still love the Lord. They want Trump and Pence, and Pence to win. I watch the testimony of the vice presidential candidate, Pence. A very clear-cut testimony of saving grace. If ever I want Trump to win, it's because of Pence. Because he is a believer of the Lord. And you know, uh, there might be a lot of things that we don't like the USA because of their stand today. But we cannot in any way forget what our American churches many, many years back who loved the souls of men and brought the gospel here in the Philippines way back in the 1900s. That's why I am praying I have prayed, and I'm still praying. That's why I'm telling our pastors and leaders and preachers to pray. Why? I said in this prayer, America is in the crossroad. We cannot afford Hillary to become president. We cannot. Even if most Filipinos would want Hillary to become president. I, I also will, I, I want you to understand my stand on this. So, you see, 
when we pray within the will of God like Solomon, we can be sure that God will answer our prayers positively. I hope he would. God is gracious, for in fact, he did not just give Solomon what he requested, but also gave him riches and honor, wealth, but true wealth are not the material things of this world. In the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 19 to 20, it says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust that corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust that corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Here we find two kinds of wealth. Material wealth and spiritual wealth. Do you want your material wealth to become spiritual wealth? Give that to the Lord. Let your material wealth today become a spiritual wealth someday. That's what the Bible says. Amen? I mean, you know, if God has blessed us with so much money in this world, the Lord is telling us, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth. Don't hoard those resources. Don't save money in excess of what you need. Hello? So you can be proud you have that. Amen? Let your material wealth become spiritual wealth. Now, I'm, I'm not telling this to those who only have enough. But even those people who have enough, folks, can give so much for God. And even if they will not have so much in this earth, they're going to have so much up there in heaven. No one want you back on? Oh, yun dapat ang nais nating ipanalangin sa ating mga buhay. Hindi masama maging mayaman. Si Solomon, naging mayaman sapagkat ang hiningi niya sa Panginoon, hindi kayamanan kundi understanding. Wisdom, am I right? And that wisdom brought him wealth. Wealth does not bring wisdom. But wisdom brings wealth. Amen? Yes. See? If we, that, that's why Solomon is wise before he became wise. Huh? Now, to any human being who's asking something from God, the first that comes into your mind is what? Wealth. Yung palagi. Bakit? Kasi iisipin mo, anong gagawin mo sa wisdom? Diba? But you know what? Solomon was looking at a long-range plan. He's going to become king. And he is not only to become king for one day. He will not only become king for one y- in year. He will become king for more than 40 years, folks. And when he asked for wisdom, he was looking at leading a kingdom for many, many years. And that wisdom brought him Wealth. So don't ask for wealth. Ask for wisdom. Ask for wisdom. It is foolish and stupid for anyone, huh? Out of the blue, would ask God, Lord, I would rather have wealth than wisdom. It's just like one of those counselors that. That, uh, that we had in 1993 when I was fighting Hialeah. He was telling me, you're standing on your principle. Makakain ba ang prinsipyo? Pera ang kailangan mo para may pagkain ka. Makakain ba ang prinsipyo? Sagot ko sa kanya, alam mo, hindi makakain yan eh. Pero yung prinsipyo, in the long run, bibiyan ka ng pagkain eh. No, 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 no. 
Oh. All right. Mingi ka ng pera. Bigyan ka ng pera. Wala kang prinsipyo. Sa mga gamitin. Sama-sama. Hello? Uwitin ko, ha? Mingi ka ng pera. Wala kang prinsipyo. Sa mga gamitin ng pera. Sama-sama. Oh, anong end nun? Anong end? Ito ang end. Ha? Binigyan ka ng pera marami, wala kang prinsipyo, na uwi sa masama, anong wakas nun? Ha? Makukulong ka, papasunin ka ng CIDG, ha? at papatayin ka. Yun ang end eh. Amen ba? Alam niyo, tututu lang, naawa ako kay Mayor Espinosa. Oo. My heart goes out for him. Do you know why? Sumuko na siya eh. Ikinanta na ang anak niya eh. Naunawaan niyo ba ako? Oo eh. Ikinanta yung anak niya. Ang request lang niya, protection. Binigay niya lahat ng pangalan na mga binigyan ng pera. Can you imagine? Kinulong sa provincial jail. Akala kasi ni Espinido, mas safe yon kaysa yung local jail. Pero alam niyo, believe ako kay Espinido. We interviewed him over the radio. He's a good man. All right? So, hindi na lang. So, thought safe. Anong ginawa? Police sa police. Ang kalaban ni Duterte, nasa loob. Wala sa labas. See? I mean, it's overkill. Can you imagine more than 15 yatang si CIDG ba yun? CIDG ang pumasok sa jail, apat lang ang polis doon nagbabantay, pinaluhod pa, pinatalikod pa, tinuduwa ka pa ng barel? Si? Why? Kahit nakakaawa si Espinosa, ha? Ang hiningi niya pera eh. Hindi prinsipyo. Sino next? Si Kerwin. Tatapusin lahat ng mga drug lords ang mga testigo doon sa listahan na binigay. Tatapusin yan. Si nakakatakot po ngayon ang ating lipunan. Akala niyo ba masasurong problema ito? Dito ho sa Maynila, wala ng drug lords masyado. Bakit? Sapagkat yung drug lords, kidnapping naman ngayon ang tinitira. Pito na ang kinidnap sa Chinatown. Pito. Listen, ang masama, walang iisipin kundi masama. All right? Maaring isang kasamaan niya, ha? tapusin ng batas. Mag-iisip uli siya ng ibang kasamaan pa. Bakit po? Sapagkat ang utak niya, pera. Kaya, you know, dapat mag example natin itong Solomon eh. When God asked him, what do you want from me? Lord, give me an understanding heart. At nakita ko rito na binasa natin, hindi ba? When you have an understanding heart, you also have a large heart. Oo. Pag binigyan ka ng Panginoon ng divine wisdom, bibigyan ka rin niya ng malaking puso para sa tao. Yan ang nakalagay sa verse 29. Wala pa akong nakitang tao na mayroong wisdom ng Panginoon na kuripot eh. Naunawa niyo ba ako? Ha? Kung ikaw hindi ka nabibigyan ng tamang offering, hindi ka cheerful giver, alam mo kung ano ka? Tanga ka eh. Hello? Because the partner of divine wisdom is what? Largeness of heart. Very clear yun eh. Naunawaan niyo ba ako? Very clear yan eh. And you know what? I, perhaps I can make myself a, a very small example of that. And I believe that God gave me wisdom to minister in my 48 years of preaching the gospel. 
In my 41 years of building churches, God gave me wisdom. And with that wisdom He gave me, I learned. I learned to be a cheerful giver. And that is part of divine wisdom. When you only ask for money, you'll always think of something to spend that is not in any way uh, a blessing to anyone. I was told that to, that uh, Manny Pacquiao in his earnings today gave 200 million. 200 million to charity. And that's good. Amen? That's good. Oh. Parang yung tao yan na may 10 million Nabigyan ng 200,000. Naunawa niyo ba ako? Parang yung tao yan na may 10,000, nabigyan ng 200,000. Pagka minsan, ang mahilig sa pera, ang nakikita yung amount eh. Ang nakikita mo yung binigay mo. Hindi mo nakikita yung naiwan sa'yo eh. Amen ba? In the principle of giving, you do not look at the, at the money you, buy, you, you give. You look at the money that's left to you. You see? And I think that we ought, we ought to realize that true wealth are not the material things. Oh. Ana, ako, kung talagang si Pacquiao, eh, Talagang believer na yan. Tumigil siya sa boxing. He has enough money for him to live a longer life. Di ba? He does not need anything anymore. Nakakatako dyan pag lumaban siya uli. Baka biglang mamagsak yan. May stroke na yan sa canvas. Hindi na akong makabangon. Anong gagawin mo sa pera mo? Di ba? Anong gagawin mo sa pera mo? Now, number three here, uh, of course, we just copied this lesson from uh, David Robinson. Uh, I do not much agree on what it had been said here. Though Solomon had great wisdom, he never had the spiritual wisdom to walk in the ways of the Lord, unlike his father David. Of course. Huh? Solomon in his old age did not walk in the ways of the Lord anymore. Same thing with David. Eh lang, siyempre, i-compare mo kay David, mali ito yung kay David. Pero the same thing. Di ba? A one-inch nail and a four-inch nail is the same nail. Mm-mm. Sabi nga rito, though David was not perfect and did more heinous crimes than Solomon. Diba? He dealt with his sin problems and had respect for the law of God. Now, the thing is this, folks. We know that the Bible is completing the story of David in Psalm 51 where he truly confessed his sins to God. And that is the kind of David that lived humble, with integrity. He loved the Lord. He was not perfect. He had his weaknesses. But he loved the Lord. There is not a, a uh, there is not any word in the Bible about Solomon like David. But if you would read the Book of Proverbs, the Book of Proverbs does not speak of secular wisdom; it speaks of spiritual wisdom. You see, in a, uh, it says right here. Thus we find how we admonish Solomon his son that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. In Proverbs 9.10, that is not David saying to his son. It's Solomon saying to his own son. Oh, anong sabi ni Solomon sa Proverbs? Chapter 9 and verse number 10. 
The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Now you look at the words, the knowledge of the holy. Very clear, it is not the knowledge of the secular. It is the knowledge of the holy. This is Solomon speaking. This is Solomon telling us, that the kind of wisdom that he received from God is divine wisdom and spiritual wisdom, but there are many things in the life of Solomon that he failed. That in his own life, he did not apply that spiritual wisdom properly. He might have applied wisdom in his leadership as king, but he did not apply that wisdom in his personal life as a child of God. Hello? As a child of God. And, 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 and that's, that, that is sad, isn't it? Then Solomon's evidence of wisdom uh, in 1 Kings 3.28 And we read 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 29 to 34. Solomon achieved great things as king of Israel. He set a pattern for the kings who would follow him. Remarkably, this was the pattern of human government unto relatively modern times. Uh, you would notice even America. America patterned their government in some ways. From the Bible. As I've said in my prayer, more than 200 years ago, godly men penned the Constitution of America. They were godly men. They were men who feared God. I know if all of them were saved, but they were men who feared God, men who believed God, and because of that, God blessed that country, folks. My goodness, no nation has been blessed apart from Israel. But America. Today, even Donald Trump realized that they're down. America is no longer wealthy as it was before. Although it is still powerful, but it is not wealthy as they were before. 200 years ago or more than that, when the pilgrims from Europe came to America to establish, to establish a free country. A free country. Not just an ecclesia, but a free country. And every, when is your Thanksgiving? October or November? Huh? Third week of November, they have Thanksgiving. But do you think that most Americans know now what Thanksgiving is? Huh? No. Tanungin mo yung mga Pilipino immigrants at states. Ko alam nila Thanksgiving. No. That first Thanksgiving was a Thanksgiving not because they landed in America, but because God protected them. And that God gave them a new nation of which freedom will rise. Freedom not only to speak, but freedom to worship God. That was the first freedom, folks. And people don't realize that. Our legal luminaries don't even know that. How many people who are, who are even trained in American schools know that? That when the pilgrims went to America to find a nation in which they can worship God freely, that the first freedom that they had is what? To worship God. That's why the Baptist people became the champion of soul liberty. That's the reason why the first governors of the first estates in America were pastors. Roger Williams was a pastor. William Penn, the one that founded Pennsylvania, was a preacher. Do you realize that? Today, Pennsylvania is one of the most liberal states in the U.S. 
Rhode Island, the same thing. Who founded Massachusetts? Huh? The second president of the U.S., Adams, was a deacon. His father was a pastor. So you see how America started? It was started in a godly way. We never had that in the Philippines. The Philippines was not sorry, in a godly way. Am I right? Anong godly sa Pilipinas? Religious, oo. Oh, oh. Godly, wala. And are we getting godly today? No, we're not. That's the reason why this country will never, never, never prosper. And I'm telling it to you now. It will not prosper. You know why? Because we started wrong and we're going to end up wrong. That the only, that the only solution in the problems of this country is not the government, but it is the ecclesia like this. And right now, America is still being blessed because there are still thousands of churches there that are still serving God. That are still preaching the word, but many of them are gone. Many of them have become liberal. And many of those churches who are still preaching the word of God are small. The bigger ones have become cults. The bigger ones are commercial entities. The bigger ones are corporations. The bigger churches in America right now are business. Israel became prosperous. Israel became wealthy. Beyond anyone's imagination. Why? It is not because of Solomon's innate talent or ability but it was because God has chosen in his sovereign will to bless Israel and that God has given wisdom to the first leaders of Israel at the end of his life when he became quite old Solomon realized that understanding spiritual matters are more important than human wisdom. You've got to remember that the book of Ecclesiastes was written by Solomon not as a king but a preacher. Do you realize that? Uh-oh. Not as a king but a preacher. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, and we're going to read verses 13 and 14. Ecclesiastes, uh, or the preacher. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. It's not getting wealth, folks. It's not getting rich. It's not getting powerful. You know what I'm saying? But sabi ni Solomon, the wisest king, sabi ni Solomon, fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good, or whether it be evil. (laughs) 
Let me read to you something here that I am actually preparing. For my preaching. I think it's in my other cell phone here. Let me read that. Like what Solomon said. Listen. <clears throat> I have come to the pinnacle success of my business. In the eyes of others, my life has been the symbol of success. However, apart from work, I have little joy. Finally, my wealth is simply a fact to which I am accustomed. At this, at this time, lying on the hospital bed and remembering all my life, I realized that all the accolades and riches of which I was once so proud have become insignificant. With my imminent death in the dark, when I look at green lights of the equipment for artificial respiration and feel the buzz of their mechanical sounds, I can feel the breath of my approaching death looming over me. Only now do I understand that once you accumulate enough money for the rest of your life, you have to pursue objectives that are not related to wealth. These are some of the words that was written down by Steve Jobs, who died at 56 years old. Like what the preacher said, for God shall bring every work into judgment. With every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil, Ecclesiastes was written in Solomon's old age. Alam nyo, kompleto ang Bible. At kung hindi tayo susunod sa sabi ng banal na kasulatan, well, your life, not mine. And you ought to be thankful that in this ecclesia, the word of God is being preached without fear nor favor. Because it is the word of God. God has blessed us so much. But let us never even think for a moment that this is what God's blessing is. It's more than that. I don't look at the great blessing of the Lord in my life to be something like this. I look at a greater blessing to be people that God gave me to minister to. A greater blessing are those who get saved. A greater blessing are those that get converted to Christ. A greater blessing are the characters God gives to us. The principles to live by. By the grace of God, folks, I never, never, even for any moment, work to become rich.
God just gave that to me. For what reason? Because he knows my intention. He knows my heart. He knows my life. You know, God will never demand any perfections from you that you cannot do. God never demanded that from Solomon or David. God only told them, you fear me. You have integrity with me. Ang kaso niyan, wala ka nang pera, wala ka nang resources, tigas pa ng ulo mo. Sa kababawi, mga nakakita ng mga taong nabigyan ng kaunting pera, nagyabang na. Sana itong mga prinsipyong ating nakita ngayon sa buhay ni Solomon, maturuan tayo, di ba? Bakit napakahalaga eh? Nilagay ng Panginoon si Solomon para matuto tayo eh. Di ba? Kahit na yung masamang ginawa niya, nilagay na rin para matutunan natin eh. Hmm. Kasi, ah, kung ikaw, binigyan lamang ikaw ng abilidad, na ang lakas, maglingkod sa kanya, hindi ka binigyan ng pera, malingkod ka. Amen ba? Hindi yung, hindi ka binigyan ng pera tulad ng iba, may ingit ka. Kung hindi ka binigyan ng resources tulad ng iba, pero binigyan ka ng lakas, binigyan ka ng kalusugan, binigyan ka ng availability, maglingkod ka sa Panginoon. Maging faithful ka. All stand. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, so much for what we have learned tonight from the life of Solomon. Thank you, Lord, for your word, for the richness of your word, dear God. Thank you so much for teaching us this evening. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. And Father, again tonight, Lord, we, as an ecclesia, pray for America, for the, for the election happening right now. It is the desire of your people there, Lord, that Trump and Pence win. Oh God, I pray that you would answer their prayers. If not, dear God, may thy will be done. Bless, Lord, the offerings now. Thank you for blessing us in a wonderful way. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.